so much fucked up shit to get into. Welcome back to Little Snickers, baby. I am Michael fucking Rainey here with Kout on Jala. Hey there. Hey, everybody. And our dear friend, Ryan Shainer. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me, guys. Me and Jake always do a high five right there. Fuck yeah. Ooh, that Jeff was, yeah, was welcome probably back, a brother. better high five. Dude, than, <clears throat> it was as good. I don't know. It was on par. <laughs> I don't know. I've heard some things. Don't immediately shit on our absent friend, oh, Jake, who's having fine. a great time. And you said he's at Epstein Island. He's helping he is. clean it up. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, uh, trying to, oh, he's on the reopening crew. He's volunteer <laughs> lifeguarding at Epstein Island. <laughs> He's um, making sure the wave pool. Oh, those kids are going to drown in a yeah. different type of liquid. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Fucking Christ. Yowzer. Well, our most buoyant friend is the right guy for the job. <laughs> dude, I got in a hot tub recently with a bunch of bros, dude. Some of my fucking best bros. And uh, I like my ass would not just get on the seat. No. I was fucking buoyant the whole time. What? what? It's like it was salt water. Bro, you oh got to put God. rocks in your shorts. I know. Yeah, tell me about it. I got fucking bamboozled by yeah. some rock website on Instagram. I bought <laughs> 10 pounds of rocks for $2,000. <laughs> what is this, the Blair Witch? <laughs> and I said, okay, it, what, said it would sink me anywhere. <laughs> Jesus I'm sorry, anyway. man. Anyway, I'm absolutely fucked. Go on. All right, we're going to have to treat you to a new hot tub experience. Hell yeah, yes. dude. Yeah, that's necessary. I think that might be in our future. I don't think we've ever been in a hot tub together, have we? We've been in a pool together. We have, yeah. Perhaps a lake? Yes. <laughs> Was that a lake? <laughs> we're getting there. Another body. Of, yeah, yeah. We're gradually, we're going to meet in the hot tub. Mike. The lake is first, then the pool, and then it's getting smaller. Right. Wait, what can't, what is, is this, am I missing a secret joke between you guys? Just Mike's reaction is sincere. Yes. <laughs> to, to a, the look on your face was amazing. It's almost like you guys were in court. He's like, yeah, didn't we go to the lake, Mike? He forgot about the lake. That's yes. fine. I almost forgot Clearly, about the lake, Clearly, we did yeah. go to a lake. It just means we got to make more memories. Man. It does. In bodies of water. So, wait, you guys have never been... So, you pool, lake, mm. beach. You get into, you've been in the beach, the ocean? Mm. I haven't been in the ocean in a damn we dog's not, age. No. Yeah. Man. You When's the last time you guys got in the ocean? I'm kind of scared of that thing. It's got all those fucking sharks in there. There's a lot happening right yeah, now. Yeah, there is. I don't yeah. feel good about. But, yeah. I, but I think that's the best way... To go, like honestly, if any of you guys died via shark attack, I wouldn't be sad. It's, I mean, I'd be, I'd be bummed. Yeah, but I wouldn't be sad. It's I'd a good death. Like, That's fucking awesome. Yeah, that you guys died. That it way. is an adventurous death. And I mean, I would make things up like, yeah, he fought and then he started crying. Mm -hmm. He was crying so loud. He thrashed. He thrashed around and he said, I'm oh, my God. assuming he cried a lot. He said something. He was about it. He's like, I'm gay. And he fucking, <laughs> and then was like, I don't know. He's like, I think it was a deathbed confession. I don't I don't know. But he did say something about not liking you. either. I would tell everybody that with your last dying breath that. You said you didn't like. You heard wow. all this from South Philadelphia. It was fucking yeah. dope. And you were nowhere near the. I was nowhere near the. the he texted me. <laughs> now he Facetime me. Let me pose a moral question to each of you. Yes. Do you think if you're torn to shreds by an animal such as a shark, that you should have separate coffins for each of your body parts, or just oh, dump them all in the same coffin? That's fucking sick. Having an array of different size coffins, <laughs> like all to the same specifications. Yeah. Like it would just be you know one thirty second. <laughs> Of a, oh, it's like all the scale, yeah. but just smaller yeah. for, so for like one finger or a hand. Just, that would be really funny. just seven yeah. airbrush Kobe Bryant coffins. That would be so <laughs> funny. <laughs> I want my and of course open casket. Yeah, uh, for all yeah. of it. <laughs> or I want one casket that is in weird shapes about how I was found. <laughs> that would be cool. That would be fucking sick. Like if you were thrown off a building and mm -hmm. you broke apart, they just kind of scooped you up and laid you in a thing. I'm thinking that would the custom fucking... jobs would be a little more expensive. Yeah, but to make that many small co coffins would also be pretty expensive. Like we're talking about like where we have endless amounts of money. Right. You're talking about real stuff. Talking about real possibilities. I'm just saying, like, billion-dollar suicide, that's what we're looking for right now. <laughs> that's what we need. Bravo channel. That's what I'm saying. Like, if I win the Powerball, I mean, I'm going to live my life until I don't know more, and it's going to be fucking wild. If you win the Powerball, that would be a great thing. A great first purchase is coffins of many sizes. That mm -hmm. Just for no reason. And just keep them in a storage unit, and yeah. then the next shark victim, you say, you call up the family, Express your condolences, yeah. firstly. Yeah. This is Ryan from Russian Nesting Coffins. <laughs> <laughs> First off, wow. Where do I even start? Wow, but. dude. That would be funny. Just a f <laughs> my fucking embalmed face. 
sitting in another part of me that would now, be fucking on awesome. On a scale of one to eight, would you say your loved one is a, a one or an eight? Now, eight being <laughs> obscene fatso who you'd hate sitting next to on a plane, or one is a baby that may or may not have been stillborn. <laughs> He took a different turn on the co- on the different coffin sizes. All the many coffins are for one person. But I'm also I'm offering oh, Russian nesting coffins. Yes, okay. Yeah, that so would it's be like the door for big fatso, yeah. uh-huh. baby. Yeah, I mean, I think a cool thing to do would be have instead of an open casket, just like my dead body, but only my wieners in a casket <laughs> while I'm <laughs> while I'm laying there. <laughs> like I, I'm in a full tux, but my wiener is in your the, wiener could be. Oh my uh, god! Yeah. Under dude. one of these, dude. Yeah. Dude, glass wiener. Yeah, <laughs> that would be awesome. Glass display case for your and bird. a little a little pube falls out every day. Oh every, my yeah. god! It's like when time. I don't find love, like yes. Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> it's just falling out. Yeah, from dude. All of your hundreds of uh, lays over the year come to pay their respects. <laughs> that and, would be uh, sick. One pube falls off for each of them until oh. the one you really wanted comes back, and then all of your pubes grow, grow back. back? Is that how it works with Beauty? I don't know, man. I'm not in the Writers Guild, so I got nobody to punch this shit up. <laughs> yeah, you should. They shouldn't have fired you. They should just keep you on. And we'd have to the find time. the two smallest Marines living. Oh to, yeah, to dude, it. dude. Tomb of the Unknown Pecker would be fucking. <laughs> <laughs> would be so great. It's like you don't know. It's like well, all we found was his dick. It's like stay away. It's like we're gonna polish the shaft, dude. <laughs> the changing of the heart. <laughs> Before you get into this, uh, the, before we flip this coin, I just, just want to add that um, I think midgets should be allowed to wear military uniforms without sure. being uh, yelled at for stealing valor because they're not in the military anyway. We all know it's for a goof, mm-hmm. and I would love to see little army men walking around. I don't think wow. they should be in the army, but they should be in the army. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm just going to go ahead and flip that coin, baby. Ooh, I want to talk about the Impractical Jokers. That, you know, you asked me earlier what my baby, what uh, my new baby's yeah. favorite Joker is, and it is Murr, because he's the makes most sense. baby-like. Yes, check so, out. That is that makes I really sense. want to talk about Murr. I hope I win the toss. Shit. Another loss. Girl murderer. And, John, I just want to say I view you as baby-like because you are precious. Oh. oh my god! Oh. I mean that. Oh my god! I think of you as a baby. Too you, sincere because of how many times you shit your pants. You fucking, <laughs> yeah, you weird bastard. I did that a while for a long time. You did, but I don't drink liquor anymore. You were a pants shitting machine. It was cheap for a liquor, man. Bit. Cheap liquor it makes was... you shit your pants. I'm like you act like you never shit. Your I don't ever saying that like I have shit. I've shit my pants a bunch of times, but it seems like you were on a fucking streak, no pun intended, dude. You were <laughs> fucking... Sure was. You were out of control for a second. 2014 was a stinky year. Seriously. <laughs> you were the Jeff Gordon of shitting your pants, dude. You were <laughs> constantly on top. Unstoppable. It was Dale Earnshart. <laughs> <laughs> he was hitting the wall every night he went out. Every wall. <laughs> Holy shit. That's so good. Went from number three to number two. Oh. God damn! Right, right. you strike me as the kind of guy who knows Charles Whitman. I mean, I would like personally, yes. I wish I did know that guy because part of me is like, I guess I could have stopped him, but I also would have given him like a high five on the way out. And like, I'm, dude, I'm with you, buddy. Do your thing. <laughs> He's a good murderer. No, very uh, bad guy. No, bad dude. Bad dude. Bad but, dude. But, but you would have high fived him. P- let's put it this way. No, no. You know what I say? Bad dude. piece of shit. Good dude. Piece of shit. What he did was completely deplorable, but his whole life leading up to that, he hadn't done anything really that wrong. John, you may even know, he's the Texas Tower sniper. Uh, University of Texas, Austin. Do you remember a mass shooting, 1966? Yeah. There's there's pictures of it. There's actually some I don't remember too. it, but I've definitely heard of it. Yeah, John's 83 years old. <laughs> he's like, yeah, oh my God. Yeah. Sure, I remember it like it was 20 years before I was born. Mm-hmm. But I agree with Ryan in that this is a guy who the more you learn about him, the more you think like, oh, man, this is a guy who had a pretty fucked upbringing who's trying to do his best. And at one point, he just fucking snaps. I think we can all identify with it's a with It's a very sad story of trying to please your father. Mm-hmm. It sounded really gross when that came <laughs> out, of my, out of my mouth right now. I just want you to love <laughs> you. <laughs> you don't please me like your mother does. <laughs> But that was even that was a shit. <laughs> you can put it wherever you I want. I said it. two hands, son. 
This guy's grinding pepper over here. <laughs> I just say when, Dad. Grinding poppy is more like it, dude. <laughs> mm, this is that Olive Garden head, Daddy. <laughs> Damn, dude. I know when you're here, you are family. <laughs> 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 Damn, dude. Mm. That kid gagged hard. Damn, you call your dick Italy because I want a taste of it. <laughs> I love you so much, Dad. I want to put in your asshole. Grab the grease. <laughs> That was hard. <laughs> Are you guys sucking your dads off to save their his life? I don't know why on? we're doing it. No, man. Okay. I don't know, man. <laughs> but I missed something. We just, just for fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, that guy had a really. Uh, he had a tough life. He had a tough life. He was constantly under scrutiny from his father, who was like a perfectionist, I guess. Mm -hmm. And he also was wildly abusive to not only him but his siblings and his mom, yeah. who was like, I don't know if you've seen pictures of his mom. What a fucking monster she was too <laughs> jesus christ i don't like i, I know it sounds like a dick and everyone looked weird back then but jesus christ that family picture is to that horrific. point though he was a very handsome fellow he was it's honestly they, they definitely kept that look at that guy look at that fucking nice looking guy like bitch. all american guy seriously born in lake worth florida um the dad was uh from an orphanage yeah so god knows what the fuck happened to him before he got picked up did this fella Charles uh, Whitman Whitman uh, was he college aged when this happened? All right, so Ooh. he was born in 1941, and this happened in 1966. Okay, so, so roundabout, yeah, so about he was that. a townie, and he was a student there for a while. Okay, yeah, and he also he was married too. He was he was doing the, all the right American things. I mean, he was he joined the Marines begrudgingly to his father too. His dad didn't want him in the Marines. He joined the Marines to escape his dad. He joined the Marines. He's like, I got to get away from this drill sergeant. I got to <laughs> yeah. go to other drills. But apparently he flourished there because everybody else who had been like, I can't deal with these people yelling at me and doing all this. He was like, yeah, I'm not. you." The light you, work. Yeah. He's like, you've never been made to suck a dick in the bathroom. It's like fucking <laughs> wild. I think you might have skipped ahead. Or are we back <laughs> on uh, sucking our dads off? Now, there, there was uh, something that struck me as funny about his childhood. Um, he had two brothers, all right, and he was the oldest of the three. Uh, he had a paper route as a child, and at one point, like, they did have some money. Like, the dad liked putting on appearances as, as to show, like, that they were doing pretty well. Mm. And one of the reasons that he did that was he got, uh, he gave uh, Charles a Harley, and Charles used it to deliver papers. What? God damn. That is fucking awesome. It's a little loud that early in the morning, if you ask <laughs> That's me. That's how you fuck, dude. I hope you put the paper in the exhaust and it would just shoot out and fucking break <laughs> windows. <laughs> Dude, Harley Davidson Paperboy, I don't know how that hasn't become a video game right now. <laughs> and then the last level is going to a clock tower <laughs> and shooting everyone in town for not paying their fucking subscription fees. This is, I don't know why you're not on this Activision. I don't get it. He did have a very affectionate mom. And um, any task that he took up, he was insistent upon pleasing his father. One, because the dad just instilled that in him. But two, he knew he was going to get his fucking ass beat or his mom or his brothers were. One thing that he did take to, and he got really good at, was uh, little Charles became a pianist. <laughs> I know. It gets me every time. <laughs> I just touched his pianist. <laughs> Jeez. But um, one of the ways that uh, his dad would, in, would encourage him practicing was to place his belt on top of the piano. Damn. As a reminder, like, bro, you better fucking nail Johnny. Be that good. is Thank sick. Thank God he didn't play the oboe. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking up my fingers, Dad. <laughs> I, you, you can just have yeah. the belt <laughs> in your hand. That motherfucker will turn the oboe into the oh no. <laughs> Damn, dude. What a Damn. fucking yeah, it was a crazy. terrible father. I'm sure he, he got that from something. Or he's the most original kid beater of all time. I mean, I'm pretty sure he was bra he was changing the game about what I'm pretty sure other people who beat their kids were like, yeah, what is Donnie? They Whitman looked in doing? the window and they were like, holy shit, yeah, dude. Damn. My kid's about to become a fucking star. It's like, Chucky, what do you do to your son the other day? I saw you just fucking just right there in the neck. He's like, yeah, dude. He's like, if you want to get them good at anything, fucking karate chop to the neck. I saw it on TV. It's got to be tough if you're an abusive dad, but you wear suspenders. Oh, yeah. It just doesn't have the, have the same uh, chutzpah behind it, you know? <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sting you. <laughs> or if you have one of those Velcro belts, that would be fucking... <laughs> it's like... I guess I'll hit you. Charles was a smart kid when he was tested. He had an IQ of 138. Holy Damn. shit. Yeah. 
That's right. He was fucking Jesus Christ, Gump. You're some kind of goddamn genius. <laughs> but wasn't he? He got. He went to all like advanced placement classes. But that was also like even in the advanced placement classes, he was also pressured to be at the head of the class in that as well. Like that sucked also for his fucking home life. His I mean, dad, dude, pairing that with like all the other shit that he had to do outside of school. His dad got him enrolled in Boy Scouts, so naturally he pushed him to excel at that. He actually became the youngest Eagle Scout in history. Yeah. Which How is, old do you think he was? He was I'm 12. Guess yep. He was 12 he was, years old. <clears throat> I'm going to guess 12 years old. That, that's a good guess, Joe. Whoa. Because he was 12. He was 12. That's crazy. Normally, you're 17 or 18. Mm-hmm. Fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> when he was 18, he got a little car crash. He'd been out boozing a little bit. Ooh. Came home, uh, went around the back, assumed he could get in the house without his dad noticing. His dad was waiting on the deck of the pool. Yeah. Confronted him, and as soon as he saw him, it was on site. Beat his ass and threw him into the pool. And Charles felt as though he was going to drown him, but fortunately, he didn't drown him. At this point, he's like, "All right, fuck this. I can't do this anymore. I'm joining the Marines." So at that point, that's when he went to Paris Island. Like Ryan said, yeah. getting there that was like a fucking cakewalk compared to what he experienced at home. Yeah, they're not waiting for you to drown you in the pool. <laughs> I, I remember, like, I I can't remember if it was him, but someone did tell me that like. Later in Charles Whitman's like diaries or like things he had written that when he was thrown in the pool, he thought about just staying at the bottom. Like that's how bad his that, life was. Yeah. He was like, I'm just going to drown myself in the pool because I know if I don't come up, my dad will just beat my ass again, which is horrific, horrific. But, you know, I would have just died anyway just to prove my dad's point. I'd be like, you fucking piece of shit. That's the best way to spite your dad. you. Could, yes. You couldn't even kill me. The pool did it, you piece of shit. <laughs> You piece of shit. Apparently, you can't hold your breath until you fucking die. Yeah, you can. You I can. always thought that was like a fat child old wives tale. <laughs> <laughs> but it turns out it's real. Wait a minute. You mean instead of swallowing water into your lungs and like breathing? As yeah, your last you could force game? yourself. You could withhold air from yourself for so long that you fucking die. Yeah, you don't have to be above water to do, or underwater to do that, yeah. right? What? Right. Yeah. That does sound like a fat child wives tale. When the, when the fuck did you hear that? We're going to try it as a bonus episode at the end of this. <laughs> yeah. Shane is going to yeah, hold his go longest. Guys, get it's ready a, for that dick casket. As, it's as soon be as he baby. loses consciousness, he automatically goes to his dick and starts jerking it. The, I mean, that <laughs> would be a little fucking, pervert. I think that's how it would be. That's, he excels in, in Paris Island, so much so that he's <clears> encouraged <throat> to go to officer school. Now, as an officer, you have to have a college degree. So he completes basic training, and he's like, all right, I'm going to go to University of Texas at Austin. Goes there, and uh, he's doing pretty well there. And once he gets to the University of Texas, Texas at Austin, he takes up a couple other activities that I think you guys will be into. Takes up scuba diving. Hot. Also takes up karate. Yeah. Which he later uses against someone who loves him. You were right about Dude, the karate I stuff. I fucking knew it was going to happen. It you know about this. Search. You looked it up. I don't know about. I didn't know about that. I know I, about him. I saw your Google search earlier. Charles Whitman, father karate. In quotes. <laughs> also <laughs> followed by Pog at the end of that as well. Dude, could you imagine getting molested by father karate? <laughs> <laughs> that motherfucker will break your boards. <laughs> the wax on, wax off. The wax off. Good Lord. No, no, we don't use belts here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Father Karate. Every belt is a brown belt. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're getting in there, dude. No. What? You're such a poop guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a poop guy. I'm a butt guy, dude. It's different. Yeah. I don't, I'd rather have no poop come out of there. <laughs> I have always thought the same thing. You guys should think about colostomy bags. Oh, man. That does not solve our, pro- our problems. Why not? Because it still comes out. You're still going to produce poop. Yeah, but, but then you'll have a uh, a much cleaner exit. I would want a designer one, a prodoxclamy bag. <laughs> I was right there. I was right there. <laughs> <laughs> I was right there. <laughs> Could you help me? You didn't. You didn't yeah, help me. I'm out with that one, man. Uh, I'm sorry. That fucking God I don't know it, where John. he was going. I don't think he was right there. I think he was pretty far away from it. Wow. Right. Charles falls in love with a lady <laughs> named Kathleen Leisner. Beautiful young lady. Seems to really get him. And he feels as though she gets him. So they get along very well. I 
I can almost attribute this to him getting pussy because I know how I acted when I started getting pussy. I was actually in the Marines and I stopped going to my reserve weekends because I was getting so much pussy. <laughs> Sounds like an honorable discharge over there. Dude. It's like quitting basketball in high school because you get a girlfriend. This dude dropped out of the fucking military. He definitely did, dude. <laughs> he got laid. He's like, I'm done with this. I'm getting gashed, dude. One, we would normally go away to Fort Dix to do our weekends and to go to the rifle range and shit. And uh, I went there and I, I, I told a very, what well, it was kind of a lie, but it wasn't really. But the reality is I just wanted to get pussy that weekend. You had some scheduled? Uh, well, my wife lived a few blocks from the reserve unit. Oh, really? And they let me, they're like, all right, just come back here tomorrow. Everybody else is going to Fort Dix, and they'll be back on Sunday. But you just come around here, and I had to fucking clean up for the weekend. But I did get to go home, and I got pussy Friday and Saturday night. That rules, too. Damn, dude. That is the American way. They had a bus in the parking lot, and uh, my boy Steve, when he got back Sunday, he's like, I was waiting for you to get on the bus, and all of a sudden I see your fucking red Geo Prism speeding out of the parking lot. (laughs) I was like, yeah, dude, I was going to get some pussy. (laughs) Damn, dude. Thank you for your service. Yeah, you're welcome. I appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you if so only my much. wife would say the same. <laughs> Where is Fort Dix? You wouldn't have been able to get back from there, right? Uh, I think you would go toward it the same way you're going to New York. Okay. City. Oh, Fort Dix is up? In Jersey. Oh. I thought south, too. I've thought. I honestly thought I was like, there's Dix are down yeah, from where Dicks my are eyes are. Dude. Dicks, Dicks are usually are lower than where my eyeballs are. It's like I was in Fort Nose. It's like I know where that is. That's fucking right that's below my Maine, eyes. dude. Fort Dix, that's down by Florida. And that's the wang in the fucking country. Yeah, that was a party, man. The times I did go, I did have a good time. Because you just basically dick around and you shoot all weekend. Yeah. And then there was a time where they asked for volunteers. And like they initially tell you, like, you don't want to, if, if they say I need two volunteers, you don't want to volunteer because it's probably going to be something you don't want to do. However, every now and again, you would get something cool. They asked for two volunteers. Me and my boy Steve were like, yeah, we'll do it. They're like, all right, we just need everybody to, we just need two people to go guard everybody's shit back at where we had all of our stuff set up. So me and Steve got to hang out where all our tents were set up for like four hours. And, and Steve would make sure nobody ransacked tents. Make sure nobody fucked with it. Yeah. yeah. That's it. And me and Steve, uh, uh, we brought a little bit of Jack Daniels along. Hell yeah. So we were just getting juiced up the whole day. Damn, dude. It's Mike, a, it's Mike and Steve are by themselves <laughs> with Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we have fun, man. It always seems like that. There's no middle ground to the fucking things they do in the army. It's always like it's like, oh, we need two volunteers. You're either being tested in a new biological fucking weapon, yeah. or it's like we need two volunteers. We ordered too much ice cream. It's like, <laughs> we gotta get rid of it. It's like God you look like a strawberry man. Am I right? <laughs> Here you go. Oh yes, sir. But I would volunteer for if if I was like in you know, the military. I was like, we need two volunteers. I, first question I was like, black ops. Be like, yo, how fucking clandestine is this thing I'm volunteering for? Even if I died, I'd be like, fuck yeah. If I was part of like a super soldier program, Mm -hmm. if I ever had the opportunity to get like weird mutant powers, um, yeah, Yeah, but it could just be them shoving shit up your old bunghole. That would suck. But all you'd have to tell me is like, you'll be able to levitate things with your mind. (laughs) No, especially with the with the army. They're just taking a look around up there. Dude, that would be that's. But then people would probably know. You'd be at a bar making a pool table levitate. They'd be like, say, Shane, are you making that pool table levitate because they were shoving shit up your ass? They'd be like, look, man, I tell you the keys to unlock your third eye. It's your brown eye, and that's the way you do it here. I can fucking make things float while I'm taking a floater, dude. (laughs) So old Charles, he's getting a ton of pussy, so naturally his grades are going to fall. And because he can't keep up his grades, he's got to go back to active duty with the Marines. Goes back to active, active duty at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, which is where I got lost in the woods. Uh, during your service? Yeah. Did I tell you that? I don't think so. I'm, I'm pretty sure I told you. But we had to do um, night navigation, and they give you coordinates. And I did not pay attention when they were teaching this course. Jesus Christ, man. And the guy I was with was an even bigger retard than I was. <laughs> Hell yeah, Just dude. get one partner? Yes. <laughs> and um, we got lost in the woods, and we walked so <laughs> far away from where we were supposed to be that we, it seemed as though we were coming upon a public area. Yeah. And there were just people out, and we saw another group of Marines that just happened to be around. And I was like, um, yeah, we're here on the night hike. Uh, can you, you tell me from the right area? He's like, dude, you're not even close. However, they ushered us back to where our group was, <laughs> and we were able to not get in trouble because of it. In a vehicle? No, they walked us back to where what? we were supposed to go. Yeah, Damn, man. Was it night the whole time, or did the sun come up? Oh, it was dark as shit, man. Okay. Damn. <clears throat> they make you do a daytime one and a nighttime one. And I had no idea how to do either because they didn't pay attention. <laughs> Because they make you go to class like during this during the one day, and everything they tell you like this is going to be important. Pay attention, but 
Every now and again, again, you're just like, I'm not going to need this. I'll figure it out. <laughs> this fucking is one of those times how where... How to use a map and compass <laughs> in the fucking woods. Motherfucker, I'll, I don't need I'll this. I'll never need this. <laughs> I'm going to the woods tomorrow. You honestly did not need it, though, like for survival. You walked. To, I survived. You got yeah, back you to the fucking it. town. I found a man. You yeah, did. You, you did. You the walked right off way. campus and left the army. <laughs> <laughs> I left the Marines and walked into the army. That's so fucking I funny. Mean, yeah. Reasonably, most places you can just fucking walk towards the sun and make it somewhere. That's my argument. John. Find, that is, find in direction. Keep wait, at can it. you identify the North Star? No. Hold down your pants <laughs> and show. <laughs> <laughs> While he's at Camp Lejeune. He ends up, uh, he's a little bit of booze, and he ends up flipping his Jeep, and he gets in a little bit of trouble. All right. Uh, one of the things he also gets in trouble for, so it's a combination of uh, being caught with guns and ammo that he's not supposed to have. Hell yeah. Also. It was uh, in his Jeep that he flipped? It was on him, yeah. Yeah. Um, he's also uh, fucking, um, he's been lending out money and charging interest, so he gets caught for loan sharking. Somebody fucking rats him out. No. Gets, there was a guy that he lent 30 bucks to. The guy just wasn't paying him. So I think this was the night that he flipped his Jeep. And the guy's like, all right, if I fucking rat him out, I'm probably not going to have to pay this 30 bucks. So he gets charged for the weapons violations and for the loan sharking. Damn. That I sucks. also heard that, didn't he? Uh, with the, that's why I was like, oh, yeah, I remember hearing about that. Apparently, the one guy, he held a gun to his head and he said, you're going to pay me 30 bucks on, with $15 interest mm-hmm. on top of it. Whoa, it's like 50% dude, VIG. He was fucking losing. He was starting to become the Charles Whitman that, like, was just going to snap at any second. And it's pretty fucking amazing. And he's still, like, a college age at this point. Yes. Yeah. And in, uh, but in college, he's not in military grounds anymore. He's at University of Austin. No, well, no. his grades had fallen so badly that he wasn't going to be able to, you had to maintain a certain degree, uh, certain grade. So to maintain school officer school, yeah, that's off the table. Gotcha. Now he's just a uh, instead of being a commission officer, he's now uh, on the road to becoming a non commissioned yeah. officer. So now he's so a like a grunt. shark getting pussy. Yeah, okay. So he's like definitely growing as a person, which <laughs> yeah. I'm also all about. Yeah, it's a cool turn. I think that's about like being a kid, a child of abuse, joining the military, and then you find out you're a loan shark getting pussy. That sounds like the best thing that could ever happen. Dude, that's how I would introduce myself when I was meeting like new loan shark uh, people. I'd be like, hi, Charles Whitman, child of abuse. Oh, that's fucking. <laughs> but it's okay. Now I'm getting pussy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going through some things earlier in my yeah. life, but I'm getting pussy on the ring yeah. now. Oh, all, all jokes aside, you cool with 50% juice? <laughs> So he's, he's sentenced to 30 days confinement and 90 days hard labor, yeah. which I think sounds like a cool sentence. You yeah, get a hard nice shape. labor is Dude. not something to do anymore. I just picture cool hand, Luke. That's what I think yeah. of every it's, time. Yeah, it's pretty fucking just, hard labor, but it's also like it's hard labor, but when you become exhausted, they still like you can collapse during your hard labor and they'll just like pick you up and be like, you keep going. Sometimes you yeah. can be worked to death. Going back to dead weight. Crazy. Yeah. It's fucking nuts. There's ways to take you take it easy, you know? I mean, they, but sometimes they don't let you take it easy. They've yeah, been watching if you got hard a real, labor. real They've hard been, screw on your case. <laughs> but, you know, I got a real punchable hey, face. Hey, so. you're, you're a real hard screw up there on your horse with the gun. Now, do you think it makes a difference if you got a hard screw but a nice horse? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you give the horse enough carrots behind the screws back. Oh, yeah. He, 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 he can, can train, you can train that horse to do anything. <laughs> Just smack it on the ass and watch it run away with the guy. I was like, I know how to do it. Man, I thought about hard labor. I, I really do think they should bring hard labor back. I think that would That'd be, be great. I think it would be great because then you could re- like, you know, rebuild the infrastructure of America with hard labor, dude. Yeah, that would actually be pretty sick. I think they, that's the way it should have. They have uh, some California inmates fight forest fires. But it's on a voluntary basis. Yeah, it seems like it's a lot of California inmates starting forest fires. There's been an influx of wildfires mm-hmm. in California. It seems to be working out just well. Speaking of hard labor, there's actually, you know how women can get uh, C-sections? Yeah. A lot of men say that's too easy of a way to give birth. So they have OBGYNs on horses to really crack the whip. Make labor harder. <laughs> Man. Jesus Christ almighty. <laughs> Tore his arms out of his sockets reaching for that one. 
I told my wife. Man, that would Mike be has no arms anymore. <laughs> to come in your wife and be like, nine months hard labor. That would be fucking, <laughs> that would be sick. God, oh. I want to go. But no, once he's done don't. his 90 days hard labor, he gets an honorable discharge. Hot. Goes back to Texas, and he gets a nice house with his wife. And one of the funny things that he does is he likes to exercise uh, on the pecan tree in his front yard. He's just doing exercises that involve him climbing the tree over and over and over and over again. <laughs> he's just doing exercises yeah. that involve... He's climbing the not, tree not over and over. Insanity <laughs> insanity at all. <laughs> Charles Woman, he's a good guy. Look at him up in the pecan tree again. <laughs> <laughs> just scream. Wow, look at what kind of exercise he's doing. It's like, they trained me that in the Marines. <laughs> in the Marines, they did it. It's like, God, Charlie, get out of the fucking tree, please. He wants to get back in the school, however, because he can't. He doesn't have. He's not. Doesn't have the support of the Marines. I don't know if the GI Bill was active then, I don't or at least know. college may not have been a part of it. Yeah, I don't know what the date on that was. This is still early sixties. Yeah, it may just have been for officers, but he's got to ask his dad for money to complete his schooling, oh, and he wants yeah. to go back for uh, engineering. So the dad's like, "Yeah, no problem." And it seems as though the dad lent him the money just so he could have him under his thumb again. Yeah, yeah. The only thing he could control is that now he's like, but didn't he wait? Didn't Charles? That's all he wanted the money for was his tuition. He didn't want to ask him for anything else was just the money for school. They already had the house. Yeah. So, so I don't I, know what else he was looking for because he ended up having a bunch of different jobs, like oh. nothing full time. He worked for like uh, a, a railroad. He was a bank teller, but like this shit was all part time. Yeah. Damn. So like money was always tight. Gotcha. And he was going to school for uh, architecture. What did his wife do? Nothing? Was she just No, she worked, loader? man. Fuck, what did she do? But I know on the last night that she was alive, he had to pick her up from work. Oh, man. Anyway, his mom was uh, fucking... His mom had enough of the dad. So he developed, devised a plan to go pick the mom up and move her shit out. And they did it while the dad was at work. Damn. And dude. he was able to get the mom out. And she lived with him for like a couple nights until he was able to set her up in an apartment close by. What a good dude. That is nice. That's what I mean. Is like he's a good dude. Yeah. Seems like he's just trying to make everything right for everyone around him. And just also, you know, work out while climbing a pecan tree. It's like it's such a hard mm -hmm. thing to like balance. I'm getting a falling down vibe. <clears throat> it's coming. Yeah. Well, it seems like once the mom comes, that seems like kind of a breaking point for him. Um, he gets a job as a bill collector. So he's like showing up to people's houses and shaking them down for money. And that with his, he's got experience. Yeah, with his loan sharking yeah, background, dude, yeah. it fits. He just has a gun like, you owe Visa. <laughs> it's like, fucking God damn But that it. would still, I, I'm sure there's some sick, twisted individuals that like that kind of work. Yeah. But oh, yeah, dude. I fucking have begged for money for Planned Parenthood in front of grocery stores. <laughs> so it, and, I mean, even if people owed me the money. Right. I'd be like, yeah. Yeah. You mind. You you barked for Planned Parenthood? Yeah, in L.A. Oh, my God. A lady gave me a $100 bill once. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. What did you buy with it? <laughs> I wish. I was still getting trained. I don't think I made it out of a trained, uh, supervised training. I donated $160 to Planned Parenthood. Yeah, but you still got a fucking bargain for what you got out of well, it. Well, let me tell you. I just know that I needed it that, but I also let them, I made them uh, allow me to sign because I had to sign a form that I was donating that much money, and I donated as Caligula Day Day Jones. <laughs> and every year I get, like, Planned Parenthood, like, <laughs> membership cards that say Caligula Jones. <laughs> it's pretty fucking great. Right. I think you had mentioned this earlier about him writing his letters. Yeah. This is something called hypergraphia. Uh, it's what? also uh, described as graphomania. <laughs> Starts running <laughs> wild. <and> wild. <laughs> <laughs> what you gonna do, mother? <laughs> this August first, University of Texas at Austin oh. Clock Tower. <laughs> <laughs> but he starts writing all these yes. letters, and it starts like I, I have a lot of things that I write too, so I can relate to this to a certain sure. degree. What do you mean? I just write things. Yeah, if it's on my mind, I write it. It helps me unclutter my mind. Where do you keep your writings? A lot of them over there under the computer. Yeah, and a big bloody vest over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's my murder. But uh, some of the things that he would write are just reminders of how to be normal each day, because I think he could feel himself slipping in the psychosis he would write uh that he should smile that he needs to control his anger and he needs to stop cursing 
I agree with these things, but writing down what it takes to be normal every day is not normal behavior. <laughs> and any there's the other one is like, stop Dude. writing these notes, you fucking yeah. maniac. Right. There was one thing that I read that he did, which resonated with me so much more than anything else. When he was at his bank teller job, I don't know what the joke was, but he made a joke to a supervisor that bombed so hard that he devised his own list of ways to interact with superiors from that point on. What? What did it? What was the joke? I don't know, man. Oh damn it! I was I like, wait. I was like, what? He's like, yeah. Look at it. It says like, <laughs> no juice, right? No. All right. Well, apparently, like you get you. One of the main causes of uh, hypergraphia is uh, you get the impulse to write, and a lot of times it's attributed to head trauma. Yeah. Wait. Wasn't he also like? Wasn't he prescribed like methamphetamine at some he point was, in time? Um, a combination of Valium and Dexedrine. Jesus Christ. So he's either fucking seriously down or fucking yeah. flying. Man, the 60s were nuts with drugs. Dude. dude, on top of that, too, he started seeing a psychiatrist. Like, he's taking steps because he feels like something bad's going to happen. Yeah. So uh, he sees this doctor named Dr. Heatley on campus. Hot. And he tells this fucking guy, he's like, sometimes I think about going up to that big tower in the middle of the campus with a deer rifle and start shooting people. And he was probably like, get out of here, you waggy, you crazy yeah. Whitman. What do you think he, what his response was? I hear it all the time. I'm pretty sure it was just like, oh, you probably just need more sleep or something like that or some crap. Right, he just gave him his number. He's like, look, if you feel like that's going to happen, just call me. That's, dude, I wish that worked on chicks. <laughs> I wish I was like, you know, I think I'm going to go to this clock tower and fucking shoot up. Everyone's like, if you need me, just call me. I'd be like, God damn, score the game, bro. Got it. Yeah, we're getting into, uh, all right, so we're a couple of days before the massacre, and he's clearly fucking flying off the fucking rails. How close to the massacre did he say that to the... It was within a couple of days. Yikes, dude. That yeah. guy probably... Yeah, did they have a follow-up on Heatley where he's like, <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. Uh, there's got to be a follow-up on Heatley where he's like, uh, yeah, he never said anything about that. that Heatley has not been seen again since. Yeah, dude, what the fuck? The day before the murders, he's really going on overdrive with these fucking letters. And he's writing out a letter about why he's going to kill his wife. Like, Ryan had yeah. mentioned that, like, look, I have to do this because I'm subjecting her to my awfulness. And as he's writing this letter about how he's going to kill his wife, a couple of family friends come over. And they're like, uh, what are you doing? They come over on purpose to... They just come over. I, I don't know if it's to check on him because they know he's spiraling or just because they're in the neighborhood. This seems like the kind of... Hey, we saw you in the pecan tree just... earlier today. What are, you, <laughs> what are you doing in there? You only did 100 reps. What's yeah. up with that? What is up with that? You weren't throwing your shit at people while they fought for by you. Are you okay, buddy? Did you remember to smile today? Did you write that down on your notes or what? He lies about what he's writing and eventually they leave. And this night, this is when he plans on killing his wife and his mother. He's got to pick up his wife from work first. He goes to pick her up, and it seems like a normal night. The wife's in a good mood. She's tired. Takes her home. He actually gets her in the bed. Doesn't kill her right away. Drives to his mother's apartment. She opens the door, and he, as soon as she opens the door, he starts doing karate on his own mother. Yes! Why? Yes! Dude. He just snapped. That's why he killed his mom, because she was not mean to him, right? No, uh, just like Ryan had said, uh, how, why he wanted to kill his wife was because he felt like he was subjecting them to, to his awfulness. Yeah, they would never be able to live down his actions. It's kind of, it's like a very, it's kind of like while like sometimes moms kill their children, it's like because they are losing their minds, they're going to kill somebody else. They don't want their children to grow up with a stigma of being like, your mom was a crazy mm -hmm. person. So Classic they just, spotlight syndrome. Yeah, Not everything's just, about you, you know pal, what? all right? People have their own lives. Literally what it is, dude. So selfish. Dude, he uh, karate chopped his mother so hard. She was defending herself. He karate chopped her so hard that it knocked the diamond out of her wedding ring. Yes. Could have been a lousy setting. <laughs> <laughs> this was in Florida, you know, not the best jewelers down there. He just gets more mad at his dad. Like, you shit piece of shit. Oh, Initially, man. he plunges a knife into his mother's chest. Oops. Karate wasn't working. No. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, was I'm he trying, sorry. Was he doing the inch, like, trying to go through her and not He was working? more of a forms karate he's guy. He's like, God damn it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what, like, I, got, I mean, he's crazy, obviously, at this Clearly. point. Mm -hmm. Opens up with karate, but like, was he trying to show off? Like, look how much I've learned in class. Dude, do, you think you, do you think you'd beat your mom to death with karate? No. 
No, I would have to, to pick up the knife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, I think about, like, right now, if my mom was here and they're like, you got to kill your mom using karate. It's like, I'm using everything I've seen in movies, so not good. And I'm yeah, also. Do I get a class first? No, <laughs> no class. <laughs> no, just whatever you know from movies. Over, <laughs> whatever you know from movies, you got to implement. And that's it. It's like, John, you just got to you gotta view yourself. I would view my mother as the 66, 60 inch board that I have to yeah. snap in half. Fuck. And you get as many pinches as you need to kill your own mother? Did you say pinches? Yeah, I'm going to pinch my mother. Today. <laughs> Isn't that a big tenet of karate? The pinching? pinching? Um, <laughs> maybe child molester karate. I don't know. And there's pressure points. There's pinches. Yeah, I don't know. Man. I don't I think there's no pinches. pinches. Oh, I guess I've never heard yeah. of karate. I'm sorry. Go on. Man. Maybe it's for like little fat boys with tits. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get your next belt. You just have to endure the death of a thousand pinches. I'm finally in karate shape. Chubby, chubby karate would be <laughs> fucking great. I would actually just try to use like whatever touch of death I've ever seen in a movie on my mind yeah. <laughs> until <laughs> she like, died. Like the five finger exploding heart mm-hmm. technique. Oh, that until actually she, feels good. My, my until next she fight. does die. <laughs> it's like, oh, you, that's all right. Yeah, that would, uh, I would just be punching my mom in the chest, smashing her small tits into oblivion <laughs> over and over again until she's dead. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'd have to. I yes. do think at this stage of the game, I could kill my mother with karate because she's reached like that <laughs> Joe Biden age where it's oh, just like. Oh, yeah. Right? I wouldn't take many karate chops. I, I could, if I fucking stone cold stunnered you right now. You would smash across the floor. Yeah, dude. So this is not a. Uh, his board's not in good shape. This sixty-six inch. No, no. it's got a little rod on it. Yeah, this. Uh, my mother is it's over tur- sixty-six turning into years. particle board. <laughs> She's balsa. <laughs> She's balsa age. <laughs> Punch right through her. Dude, story yeah. of Ricky just a sto- <laughs> just like oh, just fucking, dude. That would be. I I would do that for my kids. If my son came to me when I was like ninety-three, he's like, Dad. I really think I could punch straight through you. <laughs> I would be so on board, dude. I've been thinking too. about this for a number of years now. <laughs> dude, I, think I, I would punch honestly, right through your chest. That's I know you guys have children and one day I will adopt or steal, but I will have a baby <laughs> at one point in time and I will train my son to be very flexible with high kicks. Okay. To get the strongest he can, so at the time I'm about to die, he can kick my head off of my body. Yeah, <laughs> that would be how fucking cool would that be? To just prepare your sons, like, look, I love you. I'm gonna be with you. Like, you know, everything's gonna be great until the day I'm like 98 years old and I'm on my last leg, and you walk in the door and kick your dad's head off your body. Here lies Ryan Shaner. He died doing what he loved, getting his head kicked off by his son. <laughs> Mentally abusing a boy for, <laughs> for several years until the kid felt obligated to murder his father with using karate. You know how you could donate your dead body for medical purposes? Yeah. Like, you should be able to like donate your close to dying body for to just, karate purposes. Yeah. <laughs> for strip mall karate Dude, purposes. That honestly is a great idea. Like I don't know why, like, you know, people have been like, I've always like had fantasies of murder. But yeah. like if you just if you walked into a room and just an elderly man is like have at it, chief. Yeah, if you're just like they give you like all right, you take eighty five paces into the woods and yeah. there's going to be an elderly Mike Rainey in a wheelchair. If you tell him to stand, he's got one stand in him. So you better make a count. Yeah, yeah you better kick his nuts off his goddamn Dude. right through his mouth. Could you imagine running up to an old man just slowly getting out of a wheelchair and drop kicking them in the chest Ooh. so hard that they cough up a lot, like literally wow. right at dude. Dude, that that I can sh- imagine it. That's that should be need. the next um, next iteration of the real doll is an elderly <laughs> doll that you don't fuck. You just want to beat the living shit out of. You just neglect it. <laughs> <laughs> you pay to put it in a, in a Having home. Having a it's doll like, in the basement, like, are you beating me? Yet? It's like, holy shit, his bed sores are getting bigger. Damn. Just turn Jeopardy up. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this yesterday, Dad. Dude, just throw it. That would be. Why don't they make those? But we're getting close with AI. I don't have time to give you the reasons why they don't make those. <laughs> I think we have to get back to the subject. Anyway. I don't think, you know what, man? You, this, this is why they don't have them. Because people are like, you fucking. Yeah, I, I guess we should get back to Charles Whitman. Because <laughs> of haters like me. Yeah, dude. 
You're fucking up everything good for everybody else, dude. But you guys know Charles Whitman loves writing his letters. Hell yeah. After he he shoots his mother after he stabs her. Now she's officially dead. Double dead. He takes out <laughs> a piece of paper and he starts writing, uh, to whom it may concern, I have taken my mother's life. He went to his fucking mom's house with yes. a knife on him and a gun. And he still, and used, still karate. used karate for Dude. a couple minutes. <laughs> yeah. I think he oh thought he was just like, this will be the, the safest way to do it. At I honestly to, thought. To back her up enough to get the door closed behind him, I suppose. <laughs> Here's something that's fucked up. So the mother has a neighbor named Ray, just a nice fellow, probably trying to get a little pussy, if you ask me, who checks on her Old regularly. Be fucking. They, they do. The highest rates of STD spreading. Yeah, yeah you know what I mean? It's like being in the ninth inning of the fucking game, dude. You yeah. probably had a couple hits by that point. You're willing to throw your arm out. Without yeah. a doubt. <laughs> you got to give her the yeah. eater. You're, you're pitching on three days rest every fucking day of your life. <laughs> But, dude, um, he knows that this guy, Ray, is going to check on her at some point. So he puts a note on the door that says, Ray, don't bother me. I had to work late last night. Sick. So Ray's not going to bother her. He goes home to his wife. She's asleep. He stabs her in the chest. No karate. No karate whatsoever. He ends up, uh, he tries finishing his letter like he wrote for his mother on his typewriter now. Saying to whom it may concern, I have killed my wife, but the fucking ribbon breaks. <coughs> so he's got to finish it in writing. Oh, man. Which that's is a, never something you want to do. That's a bad look. Dude, Mondays, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like you kill your mom. At that point, you got to do the whole thing handwritten. The cur- yeah. You can't have half I type, know. half. You, you're a real dickhead the, if you do half yeah. and half. Yeah. The perfectionist in him was losing. Mm-hmm. His, he was fucking losing his mind. I neglected to mention this, but... Um, I don't know how long before he committed these murders. His in-laws, this is a very fucked up thing to do to somebody. His in-laws gave them a dog. Oh, yeah? It's, it's just very rude to surprise somebody with a dog. It's like, here, here's your responsibility yeah, for the next 15 years. Yeah, that is fucking wild as hell. They yeah, that is the, something you buy on your own, I yeah. suppose. Right. It, yeah. And the dog, I don't know how to pronounce this dog's name. I think it's Scosi. It's S-C-H-O-C-I-E. The name or the breed? The name of the dog. Scochi. I had a dog. I had a couple dogs named Scooch, but you had a you had more than one yeah. dog named my, my Scooch. <laughs> yeah, my mother, who I'm going to use as a human karate board, is not a very bright woman. Scooch was as far as uh, she could take it. <laughs> Scooch. They're the only Scooch two again. dogs named Scooch I've ever heard of. No, that's yeah. pretty. That's like Scooches. Pete and Pete. That's pretty fucking good. That's pretty good. So were they concurrent at all? No, we we didn't have multiple scooches. We had um, one scooch at a time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a great show one with a lady, a line, a lady yeah. who has dementia. One scooch at a time. <laughs> she thinks his dog is dead. Maybe <laughs> every day is brand new. <laughs> Hello, Mike. <laughs> Hello, Mike. <laughs> Dude, that would be fucking great. Dementia, fucking one scooch at a time. <laughs> So he's he's killed his mother. He's killed his wife. Now the dog Scosi ends up coming into the house. It's got his own house in the in the yard. Comes in through the doggy door. Naturally, I thought, all right, he's going to kill this dog. He doesn't. Yeah. He feeds the dog. And the he, dog probably hasn't seen the. No, the dog's coming in. He's just greeting yeah. him. He doesn't know what's doing in the other room, and he doesn't know what he's about to do either. John, dogs aren't that smart. He writes a letter uh, to the dog. <laughs> <laughs> he uses his old paw. He just said he wasn't that smart, and he writes a letter to the dog. <laughs> I'm Scosi. Kill mommy. And uh, my grandma mom. I killed him. I didn't even want to do for me. I need to be put down. That's how he broke Dude. the typewriter. He was using the dog's fucking paws on those keys. They're not made for dog paws. Yeah. <laughs> Try to fit the paws around the gun yeah. that he paw prints. <laughs> He's like, this is airtight, Charles. You are a genius. <laughs> he lets the dog survive, thank God. He writes a letter to the in-law saying, please take care of Scozy. Great. Which, best possible outcome in this situation. For the dog, definitely. Yes. What if he did karate on the dog? <laughs> Just started fucking <laughs> or the dog was more proficient in karate than he oh was. man he's like hong kong fooey <laughs> <laughs> fucking just doing everything that would be fucking great now john i know you didn't like the conversation about could you kill your mom with karate i participated in it i'm just saying now how many dogs do you think you could kill with karate uh 
How, many, how big is a dog? So we're talking about like maybe like a, a golden, golden golden retriever. This is like seventy five pounds. Yeah, seventy five pounder. How long do you I think could probably, you could karate I chop? I take out more than five golden retrievers. That's a lot think. of work. That yeah. is so much work. Yeah, they're energetic as shit, dude. But you, but like one golden retriever, how you many? You can't times? just chop it until it stops. You have to kill the dog. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm saying is like, what type? People like, hate this kind of shit. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not talk about killing animals. <laughs> Dude, somebody actually commented like uh, last week's dad meat. They're like, or no, today it was like, oh great, we've we've reached the dog killing portion of dad meat. Yeah, <laughs> there's a resounding uh, <laughs> zero tolerance policy on the internet. Fine, talking about killing animals. Good lord. There's a couple more interesting things that Charles did before he had. But to I, for the record, five golden retrievers. I'm just saying, <laughs> it's an interesting topic. He also leaves a note with directions to develop pictures that he wants done. Whoa. That's a big request. It is. And he also calls his mother out of work, and he also calls his wife out of work. Does he do their voices? <laughs> <laughs> what excuse do you think he gave? Uh, now you're, you're doing it in the voice. You do mama, you do the wife. Okay. Hi. Oh, I can't come into work today because I have a bad headache. Okay. Hi, I can't come into work today. I was brutally murdered by my husband in bed. Uh, I just want to let everyone know that maybe I'll be in tomorrow, but <laughs> I was definitely murdered. I was stabbed in the head repeatedly by my husband. He tried to do karate to his mom. I know this is a long message, but I just want to let everyone know that Barbara will be picking up my shifts and my dog is okay, uh, but I was brutally murdered by my husband. Oop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would buy those. It was pretty good. <laughs> what was it? Do you know what it was? I don't know what okay. he said. Damn he, it. I think he just said they were not feeling well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the 60s were crazy. They believed anything. You yeah. could just leave a Dude. note on the door like, don't bother me. <laughs> Dude, they're... Ray, don't bother me for until it starts to smell. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't bother me till my funeral, Ray. <laughs> Please. Yeah, don't start thinking until I start stinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there is a... It's... Excellent, but it's also terrifying. A documentary about what Charles Whitman ended up doing. It's called Tower. It was made in 2015, and it's really uh, interestingly put together. It's a combination of actual footage of that day's events and animation. Animation. Yeah. And they're giving claymation. The I was about yes. to say claymation. <laughs> it's claymation. There's, yeah, there's puppets tapes. everywhere. <laughs> but, dude, they're giving it from the perspectives of people who were either uh, wounded that day or on campus experiencing this. And Riot had mentioned, I, th I think it was the first woman that was shot in the yeah. plaza was a pregnant yeah. woman. She was walking with her, I don't know if it was her husband or fiance or whatever they were walking. They were the first one shot, I believe, in that area. And that lady lived? No. Dude, no. there's, the the animation is giving her perspective. She doesn't survive, though. And there's one fucked up thing that, like, really stuck with me from that documentary. It's like, uh this animated woman telling this story about how she, she was shot and how hot it was on the fucking asphalt. She's talking about feeling her baby fall to the side of her belly, which is an, an extremely fucked up way to describe how insane that situation was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's pretty heavy. Yeah, man. Yeah. But leading up to this, <sighs> he starts filling a trunk with all the shit that he thinks he's going to need on this day. Some things, uh, sandwiches, Sunglasses. Eagle Scout in him. Yes. Gonna get hungry. Yeah. He is, yeah. He ends up renting a dolly and going on a spending spree. <clears throat> what do you mean a uh, rents a dolly? Like a hand truck? Yeah, yeah. because he's got like a, a military-sized trunk that he's going to put all of his shit in because he knows he's going to be in this for the long haul. Yep. And it does go on for a while, too. Not as, He probably anticipated it going on longer than it actually Without did. Without a doubt. It's like 96 minutes that the shooting yeah. happened. Jesus Christ. Which is... This wasn't the first mass shooting in, in America. The first mass shooting was in uh, Camden, I think. A guy named Charles Unruh just oh. walked around his neighborhood just shooting people. Dang. Dang. I would have said the Boston Massacre, but sure. <laughs> yeah, if you've been a stickler about sure, it. Sure, Mike. <laughs> Whatever. And this, uh, this was like smack dab main part of campus, you're saying? It's like the green... Oh, dude, the yeah. Quad. yeah he's, yes. he's, he's on the clock tower. Yeah. He's fucking up it's like there. It's the centerpiece it's, it's, of yeah. campus. It's really a beautiful place, too. 
Really is. And um and he's up high enough that he can still find people an hour and a half later to shoot at. Like, I people just don't know what's happening. Yeah, yeah, the first couple of shots that were like there were always it's funny every time if you watch anything that is like a, a documentary about shootings that are happening, even with the JFK assassination, every time they talk about hearing the first t- shot, everyone's like, I thought it was a car backfiring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everyone thinks that it's just something off in the distance until people are on the ground. And by that time, especially with somebody like Whitman, who was a skilled marksman who could shoot anyone or anything, I think he killed 14, 14 he people. He killed 11 and he wounded 31. Jesus Christ, man. But That's, dude, during his spending spree, he he's buying. He's already got weapons, but he ends up buying more weapons. He buys an M1 carbine, and he also he runs out of checks, so he yeah. ends up putting a shotgun on a payment plan. Was he laughing the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, okay, <laughs> six easy payments." I should have done this with all the guns. <laughs> yeah, these really are easy payments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck getting repossession. This. Yeah. What? What are you going to do? Take this gun from my cold, dead fingers? <laughs> Whatever. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. But, but he heads to the tower. This is uh, August 1st, 1966. Huh. And um, he starts shooting at 11.45 a.m. Now, he, his plan is to take the elevator up there, but he starts hitting the button. The elevator's not on. And the receptionist, like Ryan said, like somebody with, with a ton of weird shit is not cause for alarm in this area. There's actually kids on campus that have guns. There's a point where police go into classroom saying, "Look, if anybody's got a fucking rifle, yeah, you, I remember you should probably that come part. fucking help." Damn. Yeah. And dude. one kid that they found, a the kid's like, "Yeah, I got a rifle." He had it in his car. Damn, dude, that's how crazy it was that like the police were like, "Ah, oh, we might be outgunned. Who's got a gun here in this town?" And everyone was like, "I do." And they went to try and wasn't there a part where there was a plane? Flying by, yeah. A too? Cop got a got a plane, yeah. Like somehow a cop tried to fly past. I don't know if he was shooting out of the plane. I think he, he was just wanted to spook. <laughs> I think he was just shooting out of the plane like a fucking good old boy. That's so crazy. But he's he's trying to lug this thing upstairs, but the elevator's not working. So the receptionist on the bottom floor is a woman named Vera. She's like, "Do you need to go up to the uh, to the observation deck?" He's like, "Mm-hmm." So she turns it on for him. So he's able to get up to the observation deck. She sees he has this giant trunk, yeah. right? But I think people are just so unassuming because who the fuck would do it? Like, of course. Right. Yeah. He was also, wasn't he I mean, also wearing like coveralls? Didn't he look like just like a janitor or something like that? Was, yeah. He had like a research assistant badge, yeah, which got him yeah. into a certain parking lot, right, too. Yeah, so yeah, like, I'm not going to argue with a fucking like, nerd about what you're going into the fucking yeah. sky for. <laughs> the observation. <laughs> the measurements where you got to cut with a string gay. on it. <laughs> Whatever you got to do up there to keep your grant money free, get out of my fucking face <laughs> and into that elevator. You'd make a good tower receptionist, buddy. Anybody ever told you that? <laughs> You're the first one. <laughs> <laughs> you got a bright future, dude. <laughs> but, dude, this goes on for over a fucking hour and a half, and people just have no idea what the fuck is happening. <clears throat> and they, uh, it, they're slow to even acknowledge where it's coming from. For a yes. while. So he's able to take the elevator up to the 27th floor. The 28th floor is where the observation deck is. So this is gigantic. This is it's much massive, higher than dude. I thought. Dude, it's massive. Yeah. He takes the elevator to the 27th floor. The observation deck, I believe, is on the 28th floor. So he's got to lug this fucking, this trunk up some, up some stairs. Mm-hmm. He gets up there. He starts uh, firing at about 1145. And people have no idea what's going on. But then people start figuring out what the fuck's happening. News stations come by, they're parked, they're, like, interviewing people while they're huddled down. It's seriously fucked up. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. Wasn't this also, like, one of the first mass shootings that was actually on live television? Because I remember could, seeing footage of, like, you could see a gun coming. You see gun smoke, like, yeah, like coming off wild. the observation deck. Yeah, and it was, like, nobody understood what was going on or why. Because I remember at one point in time, didn't somebody... I think someone said, that like, they thought it was, like, an invasion, like people uh-huh. in Texas thought it was like part of like a new, like invasion They're going on. Like us. yeah, like a fucking mm-hmm. war starting. One of I the mean, cops, at least one of the cops, thought it was Black Panthers. Oh yeah, that doesn't because that's right. what they yeah. were obsessed with at the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that was like I, I, I yeah. What the fucking thing? The first mass shooting. Like, could you imagine what your thought process would be? I mean, it would never be like. I don't know. It's hard to even yeah. think that it wouldn't just be like. Oh, somebody snapped and they're shooting at everyone. Right. Yeah. But if that had never happened before, yeah, invasion would be like the first thing. Like this yeah. is a terrorist 
But that was they didn't even have like terrorists weren't even in their right exactly lexicon. You know, yeah, domestic terrorists certainly certainly was not a phrase yet. Wasn't at all. This is pre uh, pre uh, Red Dawn too. So yeah, damn it. I don't know just, what the fuck I would have done. <clears throat> yeah, it just adds to how fucked up the situation yeah, was because yeah. you have no idea what's happening. Like now, if you're at a place and you hear gunshots, you're like, you know exactly what it is. Yeah. But I would imagine it probably took people a very long time out of that 96 minutes. Well, it's also you have to take into consideration how many people he was able to hit before anybody. Like, you know, like when people are like, oh, is that person shot? By that time, six or seven people could have already been shot. They wouldn't even know. Or to like have to be like, oh, this might be gunshots. They're yeah. just like, people are dying. Why is that guy laying down over there? Mm-hmm. Like, just not even registering at all. I don't even think people thought shooting. Right. I don't even think they thought this could be an attack in any possibility. I think they just, you know, you freeze. Some people panic and they don't know what to do. That's why a lot of people get trampled. That's why a lot of people get trampled when people are running. It's one, because some people don't run as fast as others. You go stand next to a tree. That is... A, that's or a along good, a building. That's a, that's a good idea. Yeah. But again, if you think you're going to get shot along that tree or a building, you're going to move. Uh, you have to know whether or not it's a... Uh, like last year at the 4th of July on oh, the yeah. Parkway. I was there. People thought guns were firing and they all ran. Yeah. You have to know. It's not really... I think I would... Be okay. I walked towards I would, it. Uh, uh, yeah. I did. <laughs> yeah. Marky Mark in you. I did. I walked towards it because I honestly wanted to see, like, I just wanted to see if there was actually a An person with a shooter. gun. Yeah. I honestly was like, I just want to see what a person who's going to do this mm-hmm. looks like in the moment of doing something like this. And I was, like, walking, and I didn't see anybody. It was just cops who were just, like, the cops also weren't telling me to go. Right. They were just like pointing and the cops were running up. Nobody was like, get out of here. Get out of danger. They were just like, look at this guy walking towards a fucking possible murder scene. It was fucking ridiculous. And then I walked a lady to her fucking apartment because she lost her boyfriend. Jesus oh, Christ, you're a scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> what a scumbag. Yeah. So this has a 360 <laughs> degree observation yeah. deck view, I'm assuming. Yep. So he could be shooting fucking, you know, a quarter mile in any direction. So that's going to also not, people aren't going to know Dude, what's going on. Dude, it's blocks you know? and blocks. There, yeah. there's, there's one picture, and uh, fuck, I wish I included it, but there's one picture that shows the trajectory of that the bullet took to reach each of the victims. Mm-hmm. And there's some that are blocks away. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And finally, after an hour and a half, there are, he barricaded himself, but then eventually a couple cops were like, all right, we're fucking going up. And then there was just a random guy named Alan Crum who decided to go up, too. The just one stayed strapped. Yeah. Motherfucker was strapped up. Dude, there was... Uh, the cop who I believe got credit for the killing was a... Uh, dude, he's like the ultimate Texas cop. His name's Houston McCoy. Oh, what my. the yeah. fuck? <laughs> yeah, dude. No way. <laughs> yeah, man, he's built for this shit. Houston McCoy? And then the other cop that went up with him along with Alan Crum was named uh, Ron Martinez. And uh, Ron Martinez... He Sounds like he's built Austin for it as well. Field. Uh, <laughs> Ron Martinez gave a very cool interview. It was on the 50th anniversary of the shooting. He took a, a group of people up into the tower to say, like, look, this is what happened. He's like, I was on my way in, and uh, that kid, Alan Crum, said, where are you going? He's like, I'm going to confront this guy. He's like, he's like, you're not going alone, partner. Whoa. So they all ended up going up, and, like, on their way up, they saw the other cop there waiting for his chance to go in. And all three of them, like, were able to get through the door at the same time. And they cornered him. Both cops shot him. Yeah, I figure. But, I was going to um, say, did they use karate first? On yeah. <laughs> That's how they got the door open. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like Texas is like the place where the cops will let you help. If you're an, if you're a fucking uh, armed, I think it depends good old boy on, well, on the situation. Immediately, I thought of Uvalde, which is like the absolute worst yeah. that a situation could have been Without handled. That's the opposite of what I'm. Very, but very much. it does seem to make sense that yeah. all right. In this case, where was um, uh, Nashville? The one that police were able to stop in Nashville, the person broke into the school. Like that was as efficient of a way to neutralize somebody like that that I think could possibly be sure. But they were to your point. They were gathering information from one of the employees. Aside, 
you know, rather than saying, like, get the fuck out of here, yeah. the one cop stopped to get as much information as he could from her. Yeah. And that seemed to be, like, information which helped lead them to the shooter. Yeah. But, yeah, you would think that. I, I bet at this time, that was... Oh, without that a doubt. was like the uh, the the point of view that was prevalent yeah. in cops' minds. Where we were just like anybody who's willing to help should help right now. Yes. Deputizing people was probably happened all the yeah. fucking time. Oh man, I would love for you if you to have gotten deputized Dude, on the Parkway that day. I would have loved. It. Like, get over there now. I was like, my name is Nashville Aids. I'm gonna. Push. <laughs> it's like who the fuck? Is like, shut Did up. Did you call yourself Nashville Aids? <laughs> <laughs> Nashville AIDS is like, yeah, I'll get you. It's regular AIDS, but it's a lot it's, spicier. It's, it's very. <laughs> it's got a kick to Hot it. AIDS. <laughs> it's like regular AIDS, but just a little bit of. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, it's AIDS with a dry rub. <laughs> That's how I got the AIDS. But yeah, these, these cops are able to kill him. And they do an autopsy and they find out that Charles Whitman had a brain tumor. No what? shit. Yeah. Damn it. Huh. So. So wait, we're blaming this all on a tumor? Uh, and, not, <laughs> and not his dad. What? Who we, who we were going to blame. I was going to blame this all on the dad. Turns out he's That's just... That's crazy. Damn it, dude. You think that's crazy? Charles Whitman ended up having a shared funeral with the mother he killed. What? His own, his own mother. A shared funeral. Damn. It is cheaper. <laughs> that is really wild. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Jeez. Wait, now how... At that point in time, did people know that he had murdered his mom? Yeah. You know, like, yeah, yeah he I wrote think the letter yeah. and explained it. Yeah. Did you figure the funeral's got to be maybe what, like a week later? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Are you implying cops can't read, Ryan? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> We're very pro cop on this show. <laughs> Sorry. We're not. They're often so stupid in oh these my cases. Guy. You damn devil. Jesus. Uh, but, I mean. So now he's got a tumor, and he didn't, you know, they didn't even let, the, they didn't even let him die a tumor. That's fucking gay. They should have just apprehended him and let him wait it out with no fucking help and just interviewed him the whole time. Yeah, cut the tumor out and shoot yeah, the tumor. Yeah, dude, shoot the tumor. <laughs> yeah, why aren't they shooting tumors these days? <laughs> well, you know, maybe the cop was aiming for it. That's actually how they do brain surgery in Texas. <laughs> yeah, a dog barks and then he fucking gets shot in the head. It's actually a good restaurant chain down there shooting tumors. <laughs> it's pretty. <laughs> Come on down to shooting tumors. <laughs> pretty good well that's crazy that a fucking well i mean who's to say whether the brain tumor had anything to do with his i think actions i think the father caused the brain tumor can you do that i think you can a a tumor can be brought on by a a number of things and stress is definitely one of them stress anxiety is like prolonged abuse you can develop a whole series of not just psychological disorders but physical ones as well it is so difficult to hear medical information from you <laughs> it's like one of the hardest things is it giving do. you a t- yeah, it might i oh. hope it does Ryan, dude. for what it's worth i've been sitting here and nodding with everything you're saying <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you that do sound right though yeah dude <laughs> yeah, look Mike's man wearing both dunce hats and drooling <laughs> oh yeah i heard about that <laughs> he's backing me up dude <laughs> No, but I do. I do know that if uh, uh, that can happen, psychological, uh, psychological tumor trauma, fair. psychological can, radiation. Can, can, well, I don't know. I don't know if it's. <laughs> yeah, they had some psychological Wi-Fi in the sixties. <laughs> is wow. No, but I I do know that. I've I've I saw that in a documentary. once. I would need to see multiple credible sources from you to believe anything medical about mm. anything from what? Me. Yeah, man. You got a look that screams, I'm lying. <laughs> and I've heard you make up so much shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what I'm saying is it pertaining to this. This is that. I've, yeah. I've heard that. Yeah, we, we do not play with tumors. Yeah, dude. It's, that's where we draw the line. I stop. That's why I, have so many, them. that's why I have so many markers here for drawing lines. Because anybody comes back here talking tumors... Which is also the new podcast that Ryan and I are starting. Yeah. <laughs> All dudes that are on the verge of mass shootings, we're talking to him. Talking to him. With Charles Whitman Jr. Charlie, how are you? Did you I've check been, it? Did you I've check been it? better, Mike and Ryan. <laughs> my brain hurts a lot. And I think I might kill my wife. I keep I keep writing notes to act normal. You know what that's like? And I, The other day I fell out of my pecan tree for the second time. It's like, damn, Charlie. 
Charlie, I think you need to see a doctor. A tumor doctor. Start with a tumor. Did they have... Uh, no. The big machine MRIs back then to, to even do scans like that? Mm, I don't no. know. Well, I mean... All right, let's see. 34, 23, 54... 54 years ago. I thought you, I thought were, doing you were doing measurements. measurements. Of your ideal lady. <laughs> yeah, we can build an MRI machine <laughs> for you. Yeah, we can we put that together. Same, hey, you know 54. That. Jesus I was Christ. like, damn, dude. That's a god. Only if she 5'3. Jesus Christ. Do you know, do you happen to know uh, the timing of the killings that he had? Like, did he kill somebody 80 minutes in? Was that like one of his final shots before they that's got him? That's a good question, and I don't know the answer yeah, I don't to that. Because that that's like, but I was telling, shit, we should have fucking gone in. I was telling you earlier, I, I saw in the one documentary I watched that he killed two kids in, not like he killed them in the tower them, itself. There were people like coming through, and there were two people that they just said hello, and he let them walk past for some reason. Yeah. So at the observation deck? At yeah. the observation tower inside. <clears throat> Whoa. And then there were also, um, there were two kids on, on a bike that were delivering papers. And I think he killed one of those kids yeah. as well. Which is fucking wild. That's, yeah, it's you like, used to on, fucking man. deliver show on a bike too, dude. <laughs> He's like, your pussy ass Huffy. Fuck it. Yeah. like, get a Harley. Just you put a motor in your thing, pussy. God This damn. is bad. I hate, I hate making jokes while I pretend to hold a gun in my hand like a... Um, <laughs> You would never be deputized at all. <laughs> I know. If someone was I like, shouldn't be. John, we need your help. He's like, what? Shoot a gun? <laughs> Fucking get this guy out of here. I've shot a gun. Right. I've shot a couple How guns. How good do you think my chances are of being deputized? <laughs> I think you have... 100%. An incredible chance of doing it. Right here at home. Thank you. I think it can be done. Thank you. Yeah. You should deputize. Yeah. You have the power to do that. I I always thought I would have had to become a notary first. No. <laughs> but I can just no. do that for myself. No, you can just talk like a fucking Cajun black guy like yeah. Steven Seagal, and they'll, they'll bring you in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Michael maybe, Rainey. Maybe, maybe that'll be my man. movie. Hard, hard to deputize. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you know how goddamn hard it was to deputize you. <laughs> Rainy. Gun badge now. Yeah, you make a good Give point. me your gum and fudge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you make a good point. With this deputy star on my chest has five points. God. This is my first day as a deputy. It's, it's got six, Rainy, you goddamn nitwit. <laughs> It's now get grade. out of that extra small uniform. Ready, get out of here. You blew up half the bathroom. <laughs> you fucking son of a bitch. It's like, God. Shit. <laughs> oh, well, rest man. in piss to that guy. Yeah, yeah that guy. Piece of Real shit. no good, Nick, man. Yeah, he was not a great dude, but a nice guy. Nice haircut, man. And he, he was all in one spree. Yeah, it was all one spree. It wasn't a series of murders. Yeah, not considered a serial killer, I suppose, right? No, he was a, a mass, mass murderer. murderer. Yes. Um, um and uh we got a little serial killer action that we could talk about on the next episode we perhaps. Do. Yeah, yeah the uh long island serial killer. Oh yeah. that guy. Yeah, Dude, he's a rascal. Did you see his search history? I did not. I no. heard it had some <laughs> maybe some Oh wait, no, it was very specific about like getting rid of bodies, right? Uh well that and then also they included his uh porn history as well. Oops a daisy. Which a couple funny ones and a bunch of like hey, hey. That's why I stay on the front page, baby. And <laughs> I didn't search for any of that. So they caught you the, showed up because of where I live. Part of why they were able to catch this fucking guy, Rex Hurman, is because they got DNA from pizza crust that he had thrown yes, out. That move is the reason I always finish my pizza I crust. I was just gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're doing something fucked up, finish your pizza. Like Always how, finish how your How to avoid cream. murder. First off, don't search for any porn. Just <laughs> let it come to your fucking laptop. <gasps> but, dude. Second, finish the piece. I'm just going to read a few of these real quick. But you can check out. This is the. Um, we'll talk about him more in the uh, episode that okay. we're doing after this. All right. And, yeah, we'll just uh, save it for then. Yeah. Which might be a, a Patreon exclusive episode. Yep. Yeah, uh, one of these two is going to be a Patreon exclusive episode. Yeah, let's Probably just say it's that one. one. Whoa, okay, yeah. Dude. Again, we're going to talk about this new case on that episode. But, 
boys, I mean, this is some wild and isn't stuff. He, so he's linked to four, and then there's a possible like fifth one? Six more, or six more? There's six yeah. more? Dude, there's a bunch, and then there's like a toddler's body that they found, which could be linked to him. And judging oh. by his search history, Jeez. I wouldn't put it past Jesus him. Jesus Christ. Yeah, we'll, we will get into that on the next episode. We've already done an hour, right? Probably right. an hour and a half. Yeah. God dang. But yeah, thank you guys for joining us. Thank if you're you. watching this on Patreon, Thanks thank you for, for becoming me, a patron. Ryan Shaner. Ryan Shaner. You're Ryan. one of my favorite people to hang oh, out with. Get out of here. Let alone podcast with. I love it. Thank and I know you. our patrons love you. And if you're watching this on Patreon, thank you for becoming a patron. It's because you, we can do all the dumb shit that we're doing right now. And we're going to do even more. Uh, but if you're watching this for free, thank you for your support. But also consider becoming a patron. You can do that by going to patreon.com slash little stinkers. That's L I L. S T I N K E R S. If you become a patron, it's either four bucks a month or forty bucks for the year. You get early access to every episode. You get an extra episode every month. You get a live AMA each month. We're doing a fucking book club meeting next month. Um, what else do we do, John? We do book movie club, watch alongs. Movie watch alongs. Uh, whatever we're feeling. We do flavor of the month sometimes. We just make something up and do a little episode about it. Yep. We did a Grateful Dead recap last week with me and Jake. Uh, which was man, I that final show on Sunday night, woo, went out with a on a on a goddamn burner. That was good. Yeah, I saw John Mayer shredding. Yeah, did you? Yeah, man, he was fucking damn. Yeah. But yeah, man. consider becoming a patron if not. Also, uh, we're gonna be doing uh, some news recap soon. Yeah, fucked up things happening, but a lot of good stuff. I promise you, you're gonna get enough bang for your buck. Patreon.com slash Little Stinkers. Ryan, you want to promote anything before we go? Uh, you can just check me out on the end podcast with Ryan Shannon. Please uh, get on the Patreon as well. You get a bonus episode. You get early access to things like that. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much for uh, all the support people have been giving me anyway. I appreciate it. Ryan, there's nobody like you. I love you, buddy. Get out of here. Love you, Shaner. Oh, love you guys. you guys. Thanks for watching and listening. Later, guys. We'll see you next time. There's so much fucked up shit to get into. Thank you.